Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. It has been said. I was going to start off a different way, but I don't want to scare you. So I'll start off with, it has been said, and then I'll say, I am not appreciated. You don't appreciate me. So if I would start with that, it would be pretty serious. <laughs> but it has been said by most of us, by all of us, actually, I am not appreciated. You've said it. We expect to do things to get something in return. Even if it's just simple appreciation, we have that expectation. Unfortunately, I'll do for you if you appreciate it. That's not what this gospel says, does it? It says something pretty extreme. He says, for our God, our Savior, our sacrificial Lord, His is a love which is unconditional, a sacrifice which asks for nothing in return. So, the line, he is kind, generous, benevolent, to the selfish and the ungrateful. How have I been doing with that? This is where it comes in. Like, no, no, I want my appreciation. And if I don't get appreciated, I will rent you out of my life. It's a big temptation. It's a big temptation. I know parents who've done it. No appreciation. Forget it. I gave you life. I gave you 18 years in my house or whatever. And then they say, okay, let me read this gospel. But God is kind to the, ungra to the ungrateful and to the selfish. We're, we're, how have you forgotten that? How have we somehow made such big expectations, right? It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder that no matter what is done to me, even by the ones who I love the most, even by the ones who I'm supposed to love the most, even by the ones I don't know at all, does it matter? That gospel is piercing. That gospel is simple. It just says, love your enemies. Well, okay, who's my enemy? Well, the one who despises me. Give them a lot of love. Give them your best prayer. In fact, put your enemies at the top of the list and the ones that you, you know, you're expected to pray for your spouse. Anyway. Okay, we know we're going to do that a lot. But do we pray for the one who harms us, the one who hurts us, the one who has nothing good to ever say about us, right? If not, we are not like, we are not our father's children. We are not kind to the selfish and to the ungrateful. If we can do that, you know, you and I, especially like as Orthodox Christians, we'll be above all the fray, all the political fray, all the family fray, all that. Look at, um, look at Jesus himself, right? In the Gospels, we see him encounter one case after another, after another, after another. And he never gets sucked in. He doesn't get sucked in like us. We're like, all of a sudden, we're off on some tangent, like, I can't believe that they do this, or they will have this, or that. He never does that. Do you ever see Christ getting, like, emotional about that, personally emotional about anything? You know, he gets sad, he gets even righteously angry, but none of that is emotional. None of that. None of that is uh, sinful, personal. All of it is for the one he's talking to. All of it is loving the selfish and the ungrateful. And he had a lot of those in his life. Many people there who he was healing, selfish. He healed ten lepers. Nine of them ungrateful. Okay? Only one said he would thank you. So if he can do that, how can we not do that? How can we somehow like make enemies, make walls, make distances, make you know all of this? Our job is to heal everyone and heal everything and bring it all together. Now, people, will they always want to do that? No. But have I done my part? Have I done my, my, my bit to keep that door open, to invite them, you know, to not be ungrateful and selfish? 
maybe they think that I deserve that, you know, that, that those trinkets, those like, what do you call them, crumbs. <laughs> no. This guy is no good. This guy is no good. Okay, maybe I get, I get that. Maybe I deserve that. See, we have to think like our Lord Christ, who himself didn't deserve anything and got terrible. He got the worst of, of the behaviors. Alrighty? So that's like a big part of this God. The other part, you know, about interacting, just love indiscriminately. But you can't do that if you're focused on, how can I put it, the reasons not to love. Well, I can't love them. One, because they are a murderer. I'll give you an extreme one. Or I can't love them. One, because they don't like me. That's a more appropriate, right? I can't love them. Why? Because... I can't love them. Why? Because they came to church late. <laughs> no, no. I'm just illustrating. I can't love them because, you know, they don't put me on a pedestal. They don't consider me at all. They don't, they don't notice all the things I do, you know, all of the rest, you know. So, we have what Christ is highlighting here is ridiculous reasons to forget about the main purpose of our life, which is to love each other, to love each other, and to give to each other, indiscriminately, sharing everything, you know? That's why it's so good to, um, to be around people who are sick, uh, bedridden, I mean like last days kind of sick, and dying people, because they're if they never did it before, at least you see like big movements, big chunks of movement here. Like, well, I suppose that I can forgive everyone. You know, it becomes much easier for some reason because now they realize that they don't have, they don't have much time left to invest in that. And after all, this life is an investment in love. It's an investment in compassion, kindness, forgiveness. So that's why. It's good to like, witness that and then to incorporate it and to say, you know, I'm not going to be like a small child. I've, I've lived 50 years like a small child, selfish. Like, I want mine and you can't have my toys and, you know, why do they get to go first before me and whatever. So maybe in the last year of my life or the last 10 minutes of my life, I can finally say it is not about me. It's finally, after all, about my... my Un, what's the word? Un, wanting back love and forgiveness. No conditions, no strings attached. It's a good way to live. And you don't have to wait till your last breath to live that way. There have been many, and even in the lives of the saints, you see many who, on their deathbeds, they get that, and then God gives them more time. Even, and they say, thank you. Now I can live the way I should have always been living. It's a beautiful treasure, you know, to be able to just love. Yeah, but they did this to you. So what? They did, you know, they harmed you this way. They, even Job, even his friends, Job were telling him, uh, Job, why don't you just curse God? You know, and just, he's taken everything away from you. He's he says, come on. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. My friends giveth, my friends taketh away. My family giveth, my family taketh away. That can't be the basis of how I relate to everybody, how I love. If that's the basis of my love, my love, the quality of my love is very poor indeed. Very poor. It's expected. That love is not love. It's a selfishness based on how much I care about you know, what happens to me. So this gospel is saying all of this, you know, and more, much more, you know. The way, <coughs> the way we focus is not on all of that. We focus on the love of Christ, on, the, on Jesus first. If you can do that, if you can focus on the love of Christ, you won't even notice these things. You won't even notice, like, what's happening against you. Like, people notice all the time, like, oh, they snubbed me, oh, they... <coughs> 
they forgot to talk to me. Oh, they were embarrassed in front of me. Oh, they were jealous of me. Oh, they noticed these things. Why? Because they're wasting time looking for that. Instead, we, we need to be looking at Christ, and then you can follow that, um, that beautiful beatitude interpretation by St. John Chrysostom, who says, <coughs> when you hear, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He says, you won't see anything evil. You won't even see it. You know, God will put a veil over evil things and protect you from them. You won't even notice the evil things that are happening. I was just talking to somebody about that. And it's a matter of, it's a matter of, that's a gift. You know what a gift that is? To not even recognize the evil when you see it. But to just be like, Lord have mercy and always focusing on Christ. Even when you see the, the horrible things that are going on in the world. To not be like uh, so affected by that that it takes our gaze even for a moment off of our Lord. Even for a moment. It shouldn't, you know, that's, even that's that much is sinful. I'm always looking at Christ. I have to, I have to. And I'm not going to let any of these other things take my gaze off of Christ. You can look at those other things, but you have to look at them now. How? Through the eyes of Christ. It'll change even the way I respond to evil. I'll close with this beautiful story. And you know the story. Maybe some of you haven't heard it. <clears throat> the story of the old um, the old guy in the forest. The old, I think he was old. <clears throat> he's living in a hut. And he goes out. And then while he's gone, some thief comes into his house. And starts taking everything. Putting it in this big bag. And he comes in and he stumbles on the thief doing that. And you know how you know how thieves are. They call them sneak thieves for a reason, you know. He said, no what? You know, and the, the elder is there. So he rushes out past the elder and he's taken off into the woods. And soon he hears breathing and running behind him, getting closer and closer. Who is it? It's the old guy. It's the old elder, by the grace of God, moving fast. And what's he carrying? He's carrying the bag that the guy was loading up with his stuff. And he says, wait, wait, you forgot something. You left your bag behind. And he was sincere about that. And the guy, when he caught him, fell into repentance. He was so, forgive me, I'm, I'm an idiot, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. Da, 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 da. And the guy said, well, take it anyway. You must need it more than me, and God must not want me to have it. You see, our whole, our whole look, the way we look at everything changes. When you have love for, I have love for that thief who just went into my house. To have that kind of love, to not recognize it as an evil perpetration against my private property ownership. Of the, I'm so tired of all of that talk. You know? The church teaches us something significant in this gospel. It says. Your life is precious. Don't waste it on trivialities. Don't waste it on worrying so much about protecting all of the things and people and da, da, da. see how that goes. Try you try living like that, you'll be miserable every day. Instead, you know, have an open hand. Have an open heart. And have a lot of love. I think that's what Christ wants. Right? Don't you get that sense? That's what he wants from us, to be nice to each other, to be so giving to each other, to have no self-interest, right? If the whole world would live like that, even if the whole church would live like that, we'd have some significant changes, big, deep changes in, in our, not only in ourselves and our families, but in our society. We would make that difference. So, every time we hear about how miserable the world is, what bad state it's in, I always have to think, yeah, that's because of me. That's because of me. If everybody thinks that way, I think we got a shot at saving some more souls out of this very tired, very sinful old.